So hello again to the entire Filecoin community. Welcome to the first Filecoin meetup of 2021. My name is Emily and I will be your host for today. As always, before we begin, I'd like to remind you of the Filecoin community code of conduct that's linked in the chat. I ask that all of you please abide by these rules so that we can have a successful and productive meetup. So thank you. The Filecoin Meetup program is an opportunity for us to gather as Filecoin community members to share the incredible projects that are being built in the ecosystem. As usual, we have a fantastic lineup of presentations for you today. We've got Leonardo from VoodFi, Charles from NBFS Canada, and Julian. But before we begin, I'd like to highlight one of the Filecoin's most recent announcements, the Fenbushi Ecosystem Fund for Filecoin Development. In collaboration with Protocol Labs, Fenbushi Capital has announced a 15 plus million dollar US dollar investment fund in the IPFS and Filecoin ecosystem. The mission of the fund is to drive the growth of both ecosystems. If you are interested in learning more about the fund, please read the blog post that will be linked in the chat. Now, without further ado, let's begin the meetup. First up, we have Leandro from VoodFi. Leandro is joining us today from Rio, Brazil, and is a software engineer with eight years of experience. Today, he will be pr providing us with an overview of VoodFi, a decentralized video platform. All right, you can take it away. Hello, guys. So, uh, well, my name is Leandro. I'm from Brazil. I'm CTO of VoodFi, and today I present our roadmap and goals related to Falico Network. Uh, VoodFi decentralized video platform for creators to host and monetize content in their way. Uh, our vision is to help content creators to launch and grow their business by locking the pipe for decentralized video and offer uh, for everyone the control of the content. Uh, we have some solutions inside VoodFi to hand, uh, for example, live to voice, content control, monetization, uh, decentralized infrastructure, and a white lab platform. In our first version, uh, we are focused on uh, offer a easy way to everyone drag and drop videos and uh, store and distribute video using APFS uh, as a hot layer and Falicoin as a uh, code layer strategy. Uh, we are uh, we are uh, offer basic features to everyone customized our embed player to, for example, embed and a Twitter and in their website and any place that we can use our player. Uh, in this slide, we are explain about our transcode and storage flow uh, because it's a part of core system and all part of assets and videos sent to Falicoin and FFS network. Uh, when you start upload using our bear in this moment, we will take your MP4 and do some uh, tasks in a quiz system where we can take some uh, image uh, generated to thumbnail, uh, thumbs preview, uh, some uh, FFmpeg tasks to improve your video to deliver uh, streaming protocols uh, like ATLS, Dash, and Smooth Streaming. Uh, in our interface, we are offer a easy way to manage your videos and copy uh, your embed play link and paste, for example, on a Twitter. This is like the image for our event player. Uh, here, example, working on a Twitter, but you can use your event play for your website and so on. Uh, we are working on an uh, tools to provide uh, for everyone KPIs to analyze rich uh, information about the delivery of the video and storage, uh, like a minor info, the, uh, the price uh, paid by deal. And uh, our roadmap uh, is here uh, in a divided for key. Uh, on key one, we are focused to release our first version, move out to beta, uh, put uh, in a live analytics, uh, a new wire interface, and offer a P2P secure deliver uh, mixed with uh, centralized CDNs to provide uh, uh, a better experience consuming the videos. On K2, uh, we will work on to offer a live stream solution 
uh, to everyone who start our BS and sending at 18 p.m. and uh, take your habit play and I don't know, put you on a Twitter and in this moment, uh, like here, offer a live stream solution with a chat uh, and, and a easy way uh, with a control access and a chat feature. And a key three, we are focused on uh, to offer our customers, our users, a, a monetization a way inside our play. Uh, we look for a solution to provide interplay, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, transactions, maybe offer IT token and uh, centralized like a credit card. And a key four, you offer, we start to offer a, a OTT platform, a white label solution to everyone uh, build and distribute uh, the visa in their way. Uh, thank you. In this moment, I will present our demo and uh, part of our uh, live stream solution. I will swipe from uh, the screen to the navigator as a moment. Here is our inter bear interface, and you can select the video. I will choose this, if you will. Uh, we start the upload, send to APFS, and after that, in the background, I will send to a Falicoin user for a gate from Textilo. Uh, in the end, uh, I will provide a link to Emmet, for example, on a Twitter or their website. And in this moment, I will do transcode user live peer. I will take the, your MP4 and uh, create some redemption starting at 240 and in the end uh, uh, 100 is a, is a full AD to stream and deliver the here a dash protocol. Uh, you can, for example, take this link and a paste in a Twitter. Uh, another features, like I said, uh, control and setting the, the customization of the player and the security features like uh, choose uh, the domains that you want to play the video or uh, protect your content with password. Uh, in this feature, we are offering in this moment AES 128 uh, to encrypt the streaming and uh, secret uh, way using PFS, using JWT uh, to hide the seed address and in this way offer uh, secure using the PFS and distribute the streaming protocol. In this moment, I will swap for the live stream feature uh, using the live peer. Uh, our idea, our goal is offer a uh, like this interface to everyone at it in any place uh, to offer a, a stream solution where we can, uh, for example, back to live, uh, sorry, back to past, uh, moving into a vaudent content and back to life. In the right side, we can uh, see a uh, system the chat to everyone uh, like YouTube offer uh, in these features. Uh, in this moment, I will uh, swipe for Figma uh, screen where we show you everyone uh, the easy way that we are wanting to offer the live stream. Uh, Sun in a K2, you will launch this feature on, on a, a app, uh, a bat where you flow uh, to create a streaming only uh, input a name, a description, and a thumbnail. And in the end, I will offer uh, a RATM protocol address to, for example, start your BS or your mobile app. I don't know, uh, you can choose to start the stream. Uh, with that, we will have uh, a link to add it. Like this one, and with this link, you can, for example, uh, start uh, the the content direct on Abit Player. But our goal is offer a web interface uh, with streaming, the, the video streaming and the chat. Uh, and that's it. Uh, thanks uh, for everyone. Uh, and question. question you can send on a, on a chat. That's it, thanks.
Awesome. That's so amazing. I've actually never seen that demo before. And I love how user friendly the entire app is. So, so cool. So as he said, if anyone has any questions, please put them in the chat and Leandro will answer them now, or he can answer them later. And Jeff, thanks for sharing that link in the chat. So if anyone wants to learn more, you can check out this link. Okay. Um, Zach wants to know if your roadmap is public. Leandro. Yes, uh, we put on our website the, the, the slide PDF and showing our uh, goals and our roadmap. Awesome. Thanks. Okay, next question for you is how long have you been working on Boodfy? Uh, right now is our uh, eight months uh, that are the, the Boodfy. That's amazing. So much progress in just eight months. Okay, perfect. So I think that's the only questions we have for now. So if anyone has anything else, Leandro can ask them in the chat. And next we will be moving on to our second presenter. So now we have Charles Cow. Charles is the founder of Filecoin Node and BFS Canada and the CEO of Nebula AI Incorporated and has previously worked for companies like IBM, Autodesk, Expedia and Paysafe. NBFS Canada is working on building an edge cloud computing platform called Project Swan, which is integrated with Filecoin's decentralized storage solution. Project Swan integrates computing, online and offline deal management and storage price discovering in one platform to bring enterprise applications closer to where the data is located. Charles, you can take it away. Yeah, today we're going to bring as the uh, project one a storage market for each computing so first uh, a short description about uh, us uh, nebula is a container-based cloud computing company located in montreal we do we doing agent node computing on different data centers to provide the computing storage and uh, uh, data center management together in one platform so uh, recently, like uh, we participated with uh, Spirit 1, Spirit 2, Slingshot, 2.1, 2.2. So we find a lot of interest about uh, the storage market and the uh, transfer data online and uh, both online and offline. A question people always ask is that which one is the best uh, miner I should use to, for saving my data and uh, to retrieving my data as well. So uh, there are so, uh, several questions like, uh, what is the total miner currently available for storage? How many of them are really online? And uh, what is the past uh, uh, history and uh, how fast we can get it? So of these uh, questions, we found that there are lots of community projects already working on it. For example, we have a code, um, uh, uh, codified network, which is where I show you the different details or past details. And uh, Jimpack was sending lots of deals to different places, gather information about who is sending the, um, really accepting pieces or just uh, claim that. So we take the experiments from them and uh, trying to build a much more neat um, uh, UI to make people easily find it. So we gather some information like uh, minimum pieces size, uh, maximum piece size, and uh, we also found that there's a lot of people start using the offline deals since the gas fee sometimes too high. People want to transfer large objects, but they don't want to interrupt the balance transfer. So offline deals become a very hot topic recently. And uh, then they want also to know where's the GL location, because if you check it on the Fairfax, uh, those geolation is based on IP, but it's not accurate. For example, MBFS Canada actually located in Montreal, but if you check that, it will show me that I located in Toronto. And uh, the same thing as some miner in China, um, if they are using some VPN services, it will show their locations in Europe or US. So uh, it really matters for people who is concerned about how where their data really saved. For example, for because of EU, uh, Europe GDPR, sometimes you cannot move your data outside of Europe. So this time you need a real location instead of just a location, claim location. So we build a platform um, to let people can sign up as a miner and also can deliver their offline deals. So for example, if you want to upload the deals, you need to upload this way, tell um, people what is your miner, uh, what is the DRID, what is the URL, 
people can downloading the data from your site. And um, what is the minor ID you want the people to upload, uh, to accept the deals? If you want a multiple minor, be, um, put a bid on that, you can keep it empty until you found the server, server bids online and then you're going to choose one of them. If you just want to give in to the target client you want, for example, you want to give, give to MBF scanner, you can direct write the number here and add task information. So after you, after you upload your task, you will find that the task create time, uh, the description, the text, for example, you want to put the tag at the 4 GB task or 8 GB task, just for miners easy to understand, okay, is this something I really want to provide services? So after that, it will show the, uh, after the order is act, it accepted, you can see all the minor information about the current status. And then you can <clears throat> watch the state change. When you first put a order, uh, a task that will be described as created. Then it, after the downloading is finished, it will see that waiting for setting. So after the waiting stage passed, it will go to different stages, online stages like uh, uh, storage transfer, downloading success, and uh, selling in progress, they are active or importer interrupt. So you can close watching what has happened. If some deal has some issues with, as a miner, sometimes you can directly reset the status to bring you back to the purpose cycle. For example, the link, download the link is wrong. You want a, a new link. Um, after the, they re-upload, you can click here to re-upload your order. After you re-upload the newer CSV file, you can reset your status ask the miner to re-download or reselling it for you. Yeah. So here is a sort of advantage if you're using the platform. So first of all, you don't, uh, the price become much more transparent because it becomes a DR market. Everybody has their price shows there about the past portfolio. So uh, you pretty will reduce the fees you pay to the miners. And the minor bid for the story request will become, uh, will let them become more, provide better service. Because for now, the looters uh, give very less penalty if you drop a customer deal. If you failed, just a lot of closure, nothing else. But sometimes the data really matters. So miners need to give more effort, effort to get a better score. So client can manage the entire life life cycle of the file transmission. So previously, like uh, with, with the current Lutus online transfer, after you send the deal out, you don't know when it's going to start. I didn't, you don't know what is happening. And the start approach is uh, not very clear. So you can easily get the deal expired. But here we mark the start approach with the human readable time. So you know that I have about a few hours I need to speed up to get uh, the task done. And uh, also for the, for, and we also will provide a, a tour set for both client and uh, miners. So with the tour set, minor uh, client doesn't need manually generate the offline car file. He just need to run the, run the command. It will automatically upload your CSV file with the command line to, also to the system. And the miners can use the same tool connect to their internal network to update the status to the database. So you, so both parties can reduce the effort of the communication. And after everything is done, we have a potential to sign all the if the miner willing to save a copy, hot copy of your data on his server, he can potentially build a web service or data retrieval service for you. Um, and the Firecall network will become as a code storage. If they can, he can choose to save you six months or three months for the research and uh, uh, storage purpose. And you can pay him to keep the storage instead of discard it after the three or six months period. For us, we, uh, we are going to keep the storage for three months before we decide uh, to empty the space. But for sure, you can um, give lots of service either on for different services. Like uh, if you want the priority transfer, for example, this miner have three terabytes selling capability per day. Uh, you want to take a uh, 60% or 90% of it. You can give him tips if you want. And uh, the, those are some services we don't currently don't have on Luto's uh, Firecon network. And we also have the tracking record of miners and the clients. 
So yeah, and then here is the the more demo about two minutes. Yeah. Let's start from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, this is the uh sorry. Yeah. This is after logging to the system. Yeah, then you just go to the dashboard, you can find a lot of things here. If you are a miner and you want to add your miner to the system, you just need to type your miner ID and uh, then you can submit it. Currently, we didn't do the verify with the hash sign information yet. Then we are going to do it very soon. You need to verify you are the true owner of the miner. After you sign up, then you can add a second miner uh, node. And you can mark it as acceptable off offline deals or not, and as add your region. Then you can search it, your different information on the dashboard. You will see that now you have your location, and uh, you can search your ID. So it's quite simple to add, add you to the places. Yeah, you can check both miners are already in place. For the empty space, you don't worry about that. Our network scanner will uh, iterate all the network to find your ID and uh, add all the information over the max keys and the small keys uh, each hour. Here you can upload a CSV file. Uh, we have a sample here. You can download the sample and try to upload it with the same format. Uh, please notice I needed to put a minor ID there. So the miner knows that I need to download. Yeah. Then you, after you upload, you get the task created. You can see this is a verified deal. So, and uh, yeah, this is uh, all the status. It's a download failed because uh, maybe you have some wrong links for downloading or cannot found. Then you need to do something uh, on your back. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, here is another video. Uh, I don't uh, want to get it this time. This is a video we put in our, our room um, that our own machine learning platform. So when you have a task placed here, you can directly connect to our platform doing the machine learning using the data. Since you already have a copy of the data live on the network. So you don't really need to redownload from Firecom. But if you want, you can still do it using PowerGate and other system as we presented before. Yeah, this is a kind of, uh, we just launched the system about a couple of hours ago. And we will get some feedback from community and very interesting people give us the opinions and the ideas about how to improve the system, how to build the repetition component. And uh, yeah, uh, we are targeted to release the entire software before end of the month. And, uh, and we already have a beta user uh, actually is, uh, actively using. Yeah, yeah, this is our team um, before COVID-19. Now we all stay at home. Yeah, thanks everyone, and uh, uh, that's it. Thanks, Charles, that's awesome. And I love that you already have so many of our community members using this platform, um, and that you're so open to feedback. So if any of you have used it and would like to share some feedback either in the chat or in Slack, you can please do so. And as I said previously, if you have any questions for Charles, please direct them here and he will answer them, and if not, then you can ask them afterward and Charles will get to them. So I'll get just a couple of minutes if anyone has any questions. Okay, Julian would like to know if it's available now. I believe that it is, right, Charles? Yeah, uh, uh, it's uh, available now and uh, uh, you can, but for my new feature, we're going to open it uh, tonight. We still are in actively in testing and uh, for some features like uh, tools, trust it. Uh, we are going to release uh, at the end of the weekend because we still have some issue with the uh, polishing as a package instead. For now, it's still internal to, the, to do the download and uh, lifecycle management, but the process is already okay. We just need to package it. Awesome. Sounds good. Um, and Charles, could you please link that YouTube video in the chat for everyone here as well so we can reference that? Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I will go into creators uh, video later because that one is still on my local machine, the video. Okay, perfect. So I assume that you can find it on the Filecoin Slack then. Okay. 
Now let's move on. Now we are joined by a very familiar face, Julian. Julian is a Filecoin community member with a strong background in IT and telecommunications who is working for Fortune 500 companies. In his spare time, he enjoys hiking, teaching Abacus, playing Go, and tinkering. Today, he will be sharing with us an update on the Lotus Farcaster. Go ahead, Julian. Thank you, Andy. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, let me present uh, for people that never heard about Lotus Farcaster before and uh, update the other one. So Lotus Farcaster is a visualization and analytic tools uh, for miners. Um, the, the main objective and the, the benefits of uh, Lotus Farcaster is to, um, to get rid of uh, terminal monitoring and CLA monitoring and rely on a, a nice uh, UI. You can um, connect um, a, a multiple, it's, it's designed for any type of uh, mining rig. So this could be single servers, this could be multi-servers or even the multi-miners. Um, uh, it brings you a proactivity, historical view. It's very user-friendly interface. I'm gonna do a, a demonstration for you um, in a few minutes. Um, it provides enriched information and data consolidation. In terms of uh, technical benefits, um, compared to the uh, other solution uh, that are doing the same thing, um, Lotus Farcaster is um, just relying on Lotus API, um, and uh, it's very it's very light. Uh, you, you have a, a component you deploy on your miner that has a very small footprint. Um, it's very easy to deploy. Um, it's on GitHub. You can look at the code if if you like. Uh, it's completely configurationless. Uh, secure and it's uh, written in, in Python so everybody can uh, look at it. Uh, it relies on two um, products. Uh, the, the, the visualization part is done by Grafana and, and the, the database is, is Prometheus. Grafana, uh, sorry, Lotus Farcasta is, is two component. The first one is um, an exporter you deploy on the on the miner, so it's uh, run every minute by the cron tab. It retrieves all the data from the miner and the, the daemon. Uh, you can deploy it to how many miners you like, and then all these data are pushed to your private uh, Prometheus server and to the uh, Grafana visualization dashboard. So let's do the demo. So that's uh, the dashboard. Um, so um, it's it's a web UI you can uh, access from your laptop, from your uh, iPad or iPhone, that uh, from any type of devices. Um, what we've got here is like uh, first you select the miner um, that um, you have. So here I just have one miner. This is in production. Uh, and then that's all the information you will have. So the, the first piece part of the dashboard is really a real-time uh, dashboard. It's just to have an instant, an instant view uh, of what's happening on your miner uh, and on the chain. So first you have some information about the miner version and, and the network, uh, the state of the synchronization uh, with the chain, um, information about how many uh, peers you have on the diamond on the demon and on the minor the colors changed uh, when the on specific threshold that you can configure if you like uh, you see your uh, power you see um, the estimation of the rewards um, if you are eligible for mining and the status of mpool so as you can see now i have no message pending mpool is around 2,800 messages, and the base fee is around uh, 2 nanofoil. Uh, you also see your date line with colors. So uh, what we're seeing here is that uh, actually um, the second uh, deadline I've got already started, uh, and it's already proven, so everything is good. Um, here you can see that what are the, the balance of your different wallets that are attached to this miner. Um, yeah, so the, 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 each time that we can get automatically the information like that this is a miner address, this is the controller address, it's all, all automatically retrieved. Um, you get 
the vesting, pledge, and pre-commit log balance, uh, which is quite useful to see if you mine something. Um, and this is the second part. So it's all about ceiling here. So what you've got first is, is a graph uh, showing how many sectors you are sitting in in the different that are in the different states all these sectors are live uh, and but you also see the the sectors that are not running for for some reason so like uh, here i have six sectors that are waiting for some chain information uh, probably they are uh, waiting for seed uh, we will see that probably later and i have two either one because probably i don't have enough memory or disk, disk space available um, the type of useful information you will find here that you don't uh, find uh, with the, the default, um, I mean, with the CLI, uh, is that it provides you some additional statistics, like how long does it usually take to uh, seal a sector, but also how many, or how long it, it, it takes to, um, for any type of workers or, or the miner in each different states. So as we can see here, uh, let's, take a C2, like a C2 on Namia usually take 45 minutes. And on, on Hyot is really, most of the time he is taking uh, 37. That the type of information that are quite useful and you've got the variation to know that if everything is, is going wrong, you will see that there is a derivation of, of this value. Um, information about the different sectors in the different states. What are new since the last presentation? So now we start to have some information about the, the deals uh, because we have more and more uh, deals now uh, coming thanks to Slingshot and to uh, the Filecoin Plus program. Uh, many people are now uploading data to the network. So um, what you can see here is all of these are uh, deals that are uh, sitting right now. Uh, so they have uh, sectors attached to them. Um, you can see that if a deal is verified or not, uh, the size, uh, how much uh, money is going to bring to you, uh, and the collateral, all the useful information you usually have. This is going to be enriched, so you can you, soon you will probably have also uh, who is the client. If you know this client, this can show you the name of the client. So this could be uh, quite interesting uh, as we are more and more interacting with them. Uh, you see the sectors on the miners in the different uh, states here. Uh, and what you you've got now, which is, I think, very useful, is the remaining time. So this was a feature request from Charles uh, asking to get that info. So here you see that uh, uh, this sector will probably is supposed to end in four minutes. Uh, and if something is going wrong, the colors will change to uh, red. You see that there is deals inside, and you see also the creation date. Uh, you've got the, the idle ceiling sectors. So these one are pending for some reason. So I've got two that are pending because they're waiting for deals. Two they are in PC2 because I don't have um, enough uh, disk space on the PC2 server. And two are waiting for seats. Storage information here. And then um, you've got a lot of information about the, the workers. So uh, here, this is the states of all the different workers and the uh, resources consumption. I will I'll probably let you go through it because I have probably like uh, 100 different uh, charts. So, um, but you see the history of all the different things that we just presented before. So the variation of your balance, um, the variation of the, the ceiling of your of, of the servers. You can zoom in, you can do some analytics on it, you can set up some uh, threshold and receive some alert uh, about states and so on. So th uh, this is very, very, very powerful. Um, yeah, that's, I think that's all I will present uh, for today. What is new, maybe that for Charles, because I see that you're using it, using it on your desktop. Um, now we've got some information about mpool and the mpool variation um, that is coming soon in the next release and all about the base fee and the base fee variation because it's a really critical thing these days. Yeah, that's almost all for today. Um,
that's for you. Yeah, that's all. So okay. I don't know if you guys have any questions. Thanks, Julian. Yes, as he said. Oh, and Charles actually says that he's using it daily. So that's so exciting. Yeah, I see that um, I have uh, statistics on uh, on the repository. I see that there is like 100 different miners, I, I would say, that are using it now. Congratulations. That's awesome. And Jeff actually just linked it in the chat for anyone who is interested in learning more. Yeah. There's the project link. I, I have a request for, 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 for the attendees. Um, I, I'm, I'm looking for uh, someone with uh, web skills to, to create some web services uh, I'm thinking of, and I would be interested in someone wants to contact me. Um, I, I will be very happy to, to share these uh, ideas and see if we can build something around it. That sounds awesome. So if you're interested, you can find Julian on the Filecoin Slack. Actually, his name on Zoom is his username on, in the Slack. So there you go. Thanks again, Julian. I appreciate it as always. Thank you, Amy. Okay, so last but not least we are joined by laura from file drive file drive is a data bank powered by ipfs and filecoin in which users can retrieve any documents by file name and content hash the file drive team is focusing on building an open source data bank based on ipfs and filecoin and laura is actually also a, fling, a filecoin slingshot participant so laura we're excited to have you today uh, hello everyone, uh, this is Laura, I'm from the field job team. Today uh, it's my honor to introduce our project to the community and with, uh, I will have a demo of these full functions. Uh, and first let me introduce our project. Uh, field job is a data bank powered by IPFS and uh, Philcom. And users can retrieve and any documents by its file name or content hash. So first, uh, let me introduce the uh, technical architecture of it. So if a user uh, wants to storage data or file drive, the only thing they need to do is to choose the specific document and upload them. Uh, after that, this uh, data will be saved on IPFS nodes. And uh, there is a data robot will sign deals to a Philco network within two websites. And Philcon storage miners uh, will receive a detailed client proposal. Uh, once the miner agree the deal, they will signature the proposal, seal sectors with real data, and put the message on chain. So, and about retrieval, user uh, using file names or CIDs can quickly lead to the specific data users need, uh, since all of the Data are stored on IPFS nodes. So uh, let me move to the demo part. First, I will introduce the different pages uh, that you can see on the website. Uh, and recently, uh, our team did upgrade the UI design in order to uh, increase the user's experience. So this is the home page right now. It is clear, and all function keys are right there. Uh, users can find almost everything they need on this page. Uh, like uh, since the file job is based on IPFS and the file count. So you, uh, what you need is to use keywords or content cache to search every, anything you want on this website. And we move to the next page. The next page is the data bank page. Uh, this page shows all public data sites that field drive stored on Philcon with a, like, uh, with a well-designed interface. Uh, more detailed information can be found in this page, like uh, each data size name, a picture, numbers of, uh, numbers of files, and the storage capacities. And actually, each uh, data site has a uh, subpage, the child page, uh, like the Landside 8. If you uh, click the, uh, the Landside 8, you can enter it subpage. Like you can find all files of certain data sites, like you can find all, all files of Landside 8 uh, in this page uh, with it, Hashi code, 
uh, the file size, create time, and the download key is just there. Uh, besides each file, you will uh, is also have its own page. Uh, if you choose one of these file, you can see a uh, more detailed information like is hash code, data CID, data ID, and data state. And you also can see the providers. Uh, the providers shows the ID of uh, storage field con storage miners. Uh, you can. Uh, clearly know who provide this storage service for you. Uh, yeah, that's all the uh, functions of field drop. Uh, let me show the website to you. So this is the uh, field drop website. Uh, the field drop .io, you, if you enter this, this uh, the first thing you saw is the home page. And you can see all the function key here, a data bank. Uh, just uh, like I showed in my uh, slide, the, you can find there are now are over 10 public data sites right now. There also a uh, data uh, piece side. And the fill list, uh, all the over 2000 uh, fills you can find right here. And the local data, the uh, recently upload or download will record what you upload or download recently. Uh, so these are all functions of a filter right now. We are continue working on up, uh, upgrade date. And there are, mm, I think it's quite easy to use for everyone since you don't need to register or sign in for uh, sign in the website. You just find what you want and download them. That's all. That's all. So uh, our team uh, have participated in slingshot computation since phase one. Uh, and our performance, uh, I think, is quite good. So um, since we are a startup team, so we are really welcome for more uh, suggestions. So if you have, so if you are interested in our project or have any idea or questions about real data storage on Philcon network, uh, please contact. As you can see, there are uh, quite different uh, method you can switch to us. Uh, so that's all my pray today, and uh, thank you, everyone. Thanks, Laura. That's so exciting. I I really appreciate you joining us today. And if you could please put all of those links that you just had on your last slide, the contact us slide, in the chat, that would be great as well. And I know that anyone can find you on the Filecoin Slack at Laura Panda. And if anyone has any questions for Laura, you can put them in the chat as well or if you've got any questions about participating in Slingshot, as she said, she's participated in all of both phases so far. Okay, one question for you, Laura. Are you using PowerGate or Lotus directly? Uh, actually, we do not use PowerGate. We use, uh, it's not, um, completely uh, Lotus. Uh, like, uh, actually, we developed the whole application by our team. Uh, we, we are considered to uh, make some uh, details or codes public in the community. Uh, once we, uh, like, uh, we, uh, once we prepare, I will uh, sh show some codes, uh, some code ideas in our community. Yeah. Okay, great. That sounds good. All right, everyone. Yes, he says congrats again. <laughs> Everyone's very excited for you. So thank you all for joining us today. And that concludes the January Filecoin virtual meetup. 
Thanks to all of our incredible presenters for taking the time to share all of your expertise and projects with us today, and especially for displaying what an amazing ecosystem that we are building together. If you'd like to stay up to date on the latest Filecoin news and events, then please sign up for the Filecoin Slack, the Filecoin newsletter, and also subscribe to the Filecoin YouTube channel that will all be linked in the chat. Thanks again for joining us, and I look forward to seeing you at the next virtual meetup on January 9th, or sorry, February 9th at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Thanks again, everyone. I really appreciate it. And we're looking forward to a very exciting and eventful 2021.